Welcome to Culture Talk, where we talk about culturally relevant topics that you can use to start conversations about the Christian faith. And I'm joined today with Fuzzle Rana, biochemist and co-author of Origins of Life, Biblical and Evolutionary Models Face Off. And we're here to talk about a brand new resource from Reasons to Believe called Conversation Cards, Origins of Life. Thank you for joining us, Fuzz. Sandra, thanks for having me. You know, I'm excited about these new cards because they're not only convenient and small and therefore kind of easy to share with others, um, but they're also like a flashcard for anyone who needs a quick reminder of a certain topic. And in this case, it's the origins of life. Um, so when we talk about the origins of life and how life originated on earth, we have lots of questions. Um, and I love that you've broken them down into succinct answers. I think even for parents who are at home with their, their uh, children, they can kind of have a quick glance of, of um, how life originated on earth. So let's start to unpack this topic. When we think about what origins of life researchers expect to see as far as life, um, what do they expect to see as far as like how life first appeared and what the original life forms were like? Well, you know, if you're looking at the origin of life from an evolutionary perspective, and by the origin of life, we mean specifically the idea chemicals on the early earth over time would self-organize into the very first uh, cells. You'd expect, first of all, there would be evidence in the oldest rocks on earth for a primordial or a prebiotic soup, but then also you'd expect that uh, it would be a protracted period of time before life would originate, hundreds of millions of years, maybe up to a billion years, and that the very first life forms would be rather simple cells. And so from an evolutionary perspective, you're expecting long periods of time for this process to transpire. So then let's look at um, what we actually see and where the, what the data shows. Um, and you write about um, something called stromatolites that are in Western Australia. Let us know what that is. Yeah, well, one of the most important pieces of evidence for uh, when life appeared on Earth and what the very first life forms were like, it comes from the geochemical and the, and the fossil record. And one of the oldest rock formations on Earth is found in, in Western Australia. It's about 3.5 billion years in age. And in these formations are these macroscopic structures that are called stromatolites, which actually are produced by the activity of microorganisms. Uh, and in fact, it, to produce stromatolites requires really a complex microbial ecology. And so this indicates that at, at 3.5 billion years, we had complex microbial ecologies present on the early earth. But what it also means is that in rock formations that are even older at 3.8 billion years, that also show signatures for life, that, that those signatures for life probably are uh, what original life researchers would describe as being bio-authentic that these geochemical signatures are probably reflecting the activity of microorganisms. So not only does it mean life is present 3.5 billion years ago on Earth, but life probably originates closer to 3.8 billion years. So if life originated, we'll say 3.5 for sure, then possibly even 3.8, but the Earth is 4.5, give or take, billion years old, then wouldn't that be enough time for evolution to do its, its job and, and that therefore this discovery then fits, from, fits with an evolutionary perspective? Well, superficially, you'd think the answer to be yes, because that's, you know, 700 million years. But in fact, when you think about the conditions of the early earth, suddenly you see uh, something very troubling for the evolutionary paradigm. Because even though the earth forms at four and a half million years ago, Arguably, it's not until about 3.8 billion years ago that life could have even existed on Earth, because for the first several hundred million years, the Earth is, is in effect, a molten planet, and, and where there's no solid crust on the Earth, there's no oceans on the Earth, and this is largely due to gigantic impactors that are striking the Earth and liberating so much energy that they literally are uh, uh, keeping the earth as a magma ocean for the first several hundred million years. And there's no way life could originate, let alone survive under these conditions. What would that time period be called? Is, does it have a name? Yeah, it's actually called the Hadean time frame, uh, And it's after the Greek word for hell, which is Hades. And so it's right at the transition from 
the Hadean era to the Archean era at 3.8 billion years ago that we see again life appearing on the earth. So then these stromatolites, what, how would they compare then? Are they simple? Are they complex? Because if we have life originating right at the time when life can originate, it seems like from an evolutionary perspective, it would still be okay if that life is simple. Yeah, well, what, what you, you see happening though is as the earth is exiting the Hadean going into the Archean, there's another wave of impactors called the late heavy bombardment. Uh, that would have essentially reverted the earth back to a magma ocean. So once the light heavy bombardment subsides, boom, this is when we see geochemical evidence for life at 3.8 billion years ago. But looking at stromatolites and knowing what we know about them, it indicates that these first microorganisms, even though they were single-celled organisms, were biochemically very complex. So what we see is that there's a very short period of window of time for life to originate, maybe tens of millions of years, not hundreds of millions of years, and that life appears, again, ge in a geological instant. And when it does appear, it's already biochemically complex. And in fact, we already have complex microbial communities. And, and we also don't see any evidence whatsoever for a prebiotic soup uh, in these oldest rocks as well. So when you put that all together, you've got a collection of facts that don't really fit the evolutionary paradigm very well. So then we have life appearing early, as, as soon as it possibly can, and we have life appearing and it's, and it's complex. So how does that fit then maybe from a biblical perspective or does it? Well, I think it does because if you, first of all, just think about what would it look like if there was a creator that brought life into existence on earth? Wouldn't it look like suddenly out of nowhere that life would appear and it would be inherently and intrinsically complex at its very first appearance? So to me, I see this as a, as a, a signature for creation. But as we talk about in our book, Origins of Life, uh, we believe that Genesis 1-2 is actually the, 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 the biblical reference to what we would understand today as the origin of life uh, when we think about, uh, again, life's history. And there's an incredible uh, match between the conditions of the early earth that we is, are described in Genesis 1-2 and, and uh, what we have learned about the early earth scientifically and the setting for life's origin. Yeah, well, thank you so much for that. It really does sound like there's a lot of alignment there between what we see in the record of nature and then what we have um, in the words of the Bible. So if you want to know more about this topic, visit reasons.org slash 2819 to find out how you can receive conversation cards, origins of life in exchange for a donation in any amount given between January and March of 2021. Thanks again, Fuzz. We'll see you.